Today, I'm working on processing external signals in the MS-20, particularly trying to pass Omnisphere samples into the MS-20, record them into Ableton, compensating for the delay, and then denoising those samples with Isotope RX2 and a bit of EQ. So, let me explain my setup. I've got the desktop, whose screen you can see with Ableton up here, and this is the master, and my laptop is running Ableton as well, which is externally synced through the wireless to my router, actually. It works better if you, uh, if you use Ethernet cables, then it's a really stable connection, but I just didn't really feel like setting it up right now. But anyways, um, using my laptop here, passing an external signal from that sound card into the MS-20, going out into my, other, my desktop sound card, recording into Ableton, Right, so let me show you what's going on with this patch panel. I've got a stack cable going out from envelope generator 1 into the envelope generator 1 trigger in. Another stack cable, top of that stack cable going into the low pass filter, and a regular cord on top of that stacked stack cable going into the high pass filter. Now when you're processing external audio through the MS-20, you need to uh, activate the trigger. So one of the ways you can do that is you can just hit a key, and you can put the hold time on the envelope generator 2 all the way up so that it like holds that note for a really long time so that it's just open. But I don't really feel like doing that. So I just want the trigger to be just, I just want it to be constantly triggered. So I've got the pink noise passed into the trigger in. You can use the white noise too, it doesn't matter, it's just constantly triggering the patch. And the reason I've got this modulation set up like this with the stack cables is I want whatever I'm passing through it to be modulated by two LFOs. So you've got your modulation generator, standard LFO, through these two knobs here. But these other two are hardwired to the envelope generator 2 unless you pass a patch cable through them. And since I've got these stack cables, I can send that looping envelope generator 1 to both filters, which is kind of nice. So the sample I'm passing through is a guitar sample. But as you probably know and have read all over the place, the MS-20 Mini is very noisy when dealing with external signals because you're not hearing it. you don't have any of the oscillators to cover up the noise. So, in order to denoise with Isotope RX2, you need to give it straight noise for a little bit. Like whatever noise is in your sample, you need to have a section where it's just that noise. Then the program can look at that section, learn the profile of that noise, and then you can process the whole recording and try to take that noise out. So, let me record that noise in, start the sequence, and then I'll show you how to edit that out. So as you can hear, it's very noisy. So how do we deal with this? First, if you'd like to set up the sample editor within Ableton, you go into your configuration, your preferences, and if you go into the file folder tab, there's a sample editor thing. So if you browse and find your noise or sample editor or whatever you want, mine's, mine's Isotope RX2, set that up, go into your sample that you recorded, and you hit edit puts the sample offline and brings it up in your program of choice. So, as you can see right here is where all that nasty noise is. So let's just select a chunk of it. And yes, that is indeed noise. Hit denoise. 
have it learn that noise profile, double click, and there's an amount of dB reduction that you can set in the smoothing and everything. You kind of have to test it out for yourself and see what works best. The around 11 seems to work for me most of the time. So I'm going to hit process. It's going to try to take all that noise out. Okay, that's better. I'm going to undo so you can hear the difference. That versus that. Better. We can do that again. So let's select that again. Learn it. Let's turn the reduction down a little bit this time because it's not quite so severe. Process again. Still there. Process again. There we go. Now sometimes depending on the noise and everything it might take out too much of your actual signal that you're trying to record so you just kind of have to you know learn it. Anyways once you're done you hit control s to save and exit out and then it'll pop right back, back up in Ableton and now there's no noise in there. There probably will still be a bit of uh, noise in the signal but we can deal with that from now with some EQ. So I'm just gonna loop this section that I want I'm gonna put this in a new new audio track and let's see what that sounds like now. So, with a good denoising program and a bit of EQ, you can deal with the vast majority of that. So, and especially if you're putting some reverb and some delay and things on that and it's sitting in a mix, you're not going to hear that noise. So, another way that you can record or deal with uh, signals that are being processed through the MS-20 is you can add a bit of distortion to it. Right now we're just going right into the signal in, but if you pass the signal through the external signal processor and then back out into the signal in and you crank up the signal level and you deal with the uh, the low and the high cut you can really crunch that wherever you're recording up a good bit so I'm gonna do that same thing but I'm gonna try it with the external signal processor and you can see what the difference in the sound is So definitely a much dirtier, nastier signal. So depending on what you're processing, you can make it, you know, not quite so nasty. I'm not sure if I would actually use it at that much nastiness, but definitely a lot of possibilities there. So let me just let you listen to some of the other things that I've recorded and processed. Now, well, these have like a bunch of effects and stuff on them at this point, um, and you're not going to be he going to be hearing them in stereo because I don't. I only have mono recording right now. Uh, need a different sound cover with more ins and outs. But anyways, let's see what we've got here. Let's turn these off.
so that first one, this one here, number six, that was an SH-101 sample from Omnisphere through the MS-20 and the processed a bit, and then I've added, you know, some EQ, some panning, some distortion, sidechain it to the kick drum, and a glitch two. On the other one, it was a bass guitar from Omnisphere into the MS-20. And then this one was just an arpeggio sequence, actually, from the MS-20 originally. And here's a kick drum that I made in the MS-20. So, yeah, that's what I've been up to. It's a lot of fun to deal with this stuff. So I hope that this was inspirational and you have anything that you want to ask questions about feel free to to reply to this youtube video or head over to reddit.com r ms20 for a lot of other patches and discussion so cheers <laughs>